According to Reuters, Mexico's incoming government has agreed to back the Trump administration's plan to change U.S. border policy by requiring asylum seekers to wait in Mexico while their claims move through U.S. courts. The agreement would break with long-standing asylum rules and mount a new obstacle to Central American migrants attempting to reach the United States and escape poverty and violence. As a result, asylum applicants at the border will have to stay in Mexico while their cases are processed. The mayor of Tijuana says the United Nations should step in to help with the thousands of migrants who've arrived in the city over the past weeks. In a press conference, Juan Manuel Gastelum accused the Mexican government of neglect in allowing the migrants to cross the country. He vowed not to spend Tijuana taxpayer money on what he called a humanitarian crisis. According to the mayor, the number of newly arrived Central American migrants in the city is close to 5,000. The arrivals have drawn protests from some city residents who have called for the migrants to be removed. That said, there's also a potential political angle to the mayor's comments. Gastelum is a member of the National Action Party, which has been a major opposition party to President Enrique Peña Nieto. U.S. President Donald Trump has threatened to close the Mexican border if he said the situation gets, quote, uncontrollable. Welcome back. The city of Tijuana declared a human humanitarian crisis as thousands of migrants overwhelmed the city, waiting to cross the border near San Diego. So how is San Diego's Border Patrol preparing for the care? Caravan surge. Here to weigh in, Customs and Border Patrol's Director of Field Operations for San Diego, Pete Flores. Let me pose that question to you, sir. Thank you very much for your time and for your service. How are you preparing for what's gathering just south of your border? Well, good morning. We continue to prepare uh, internally and with our partners of DOD in, in assessing our vulnerabilities or our infrastructure that we have at our ports of entry and in between the ports of entry. Continue to build obstacles, shore up uh, fence lines, uh, build obstacles at ports of entry or any gaps that we see potentially uh, as a concern for us. We we'll continue to watch the, the caravan movements, uh, continue to watch their messaging uh, acts um, and anything that they're potentially uh, doing in regards to protests, movements, shifting uh, in Mexico. We can continue to watch their transit as they move um, into the Mexicali area and then into the Tijuana area. Uh, from an internal uh, aspect, Customs and Border Protection, we have shifted about a thousand employees between Arizona and California. Mm. So we continue to push forces into these areas in order to ensure that we have enough employees here to protect and secure our borders at our ports of entry and in between the ports so, of so entry. So, Director, are you moving, are you putting that uh, eastward shift in place because you're concerned that this large caravan may choose not to come through the port of entry legally, but rather to try and come illegally? So we have been preparing all along for both. As we surge our forces uh, from Arizona into California, uh, we have been preparing for both, and that is why we've been looking at our fence lines. That is why we've been looking at our ports of entry and working with the uh, Department of Defense on making sure that we are closing any gaps that we see out there uh, with some obstacles and infrastructure. Obviously, what what we are what we are requesting and what we are expecting is the caravan the caravan members to follow the the orderly process of of applying for asylum but um, we are preparing for the worst, obviously. Director, on the other side of the border, the Tijuana mayor has expressed a lot of concern. Um, it's not just now hitting uh, the, the news cycle, if you will, saying we're really worried that we don't have the resources. Are you working with them on the other side to either to get intelligence and information about what to expect if they do cross? Or how is that working, the relationship between the two cities? So here we are working on a regular basis, daily basis, with the governor of Mexico on assessing the situation uh, of the m migrant caravans uh, on where they are and, and, and how we work closely together to ensure an orderly process to the border. Uh, so the partners, they, they've been partnering, partnering with us on a consistent basis, uh, show a force on the Mexican side of the border to ensure that caravan members do not uh, impede traffic coming in, up into our legal lanes of traffic northbound and, and trying to really control that crowd to ensure that it's an orderly process. Pete Flores, thank you very much for updating us uh, for your time and for your service to our Thank you, Director. Thank you. New asylum rules. Here's Marlene Rodriguez with those details.
It's called Remain in Mexico, and it's pretty self-explanatory. Asylum seekers who don't have a reasonable fear of persecution in Mexico will not be allowed to enter the United States. Currently, asylum seekers who can establish a fear of return to their countries are allowed to remain in the United States until they can see an immigration judge, but that could change. And volunteers in the Rio Grande Valley who have spent months assisting asylum seekers at the bridge that connects Brownsville and Mato Moros are concerned with these possible changes. It will keep people that have already gone through so much trauma and suffering and hardship to come to our border. It will keep them back away from our country longer. The group of volunteers known as Team Brownsville provide medicine, blankets, coats, heaters, food, drinks, and meals to asylum seekers at the bridge who are oftentimes fleeing dreadful situations in their country. For them to have to tell their stories and then to be kept in Mexico rather than actually being able to, to cross into our country uh, to present their asylum cases, I think is cruel. Asylum seekers would have to meet a higher bar in the screening process to convince officials that their fear of being in Mexico is enough to be immediately allowed into the United States while they wait for their hearing with an immigration judge. But despite what changes happen in Washington, local volunteers will continue their work. We are going to respond to the need here locally. We, we are here to take care of our community and our fellow brothers and sisters that are coming from other countries to escape the violence that they are, are subjected to in that country. A spokesperson for the Department of Homeland Security reportedly said there are no immediate plans to enforce the changes. In Brownsville, Marlene Rodriguez, Local 23 News. An exact timeline for announcing the changes in policy remains unclear at this time. It seems the truck belongs to a Carlos and Maria Gonzalez. Undocumented immigrants, outstanding removal order. You guys cannot barge in here like this. I know you're used to dealing with people who are scared and vulnerable, but if you don't get out of this truck, I will spatchcock you. What did they do except give up everything so I could grow up in a country that we thought was the most compassionate place in the world? Sorry, kid. We're just following government orders. <laughs> spatchcock, I feel like she maybe used the wrong word there. I don't know. Why don't we ask Dan Bongino, former Secret Service agent, former NYPD officer, host of the Dan Bongino Show podcast, and author of Spygate, The Attempted Sabotage of Donald J. Trump, Good morning. What do you say, Dan, uh, about all of this Murphy Brown stuff? Well, let me say first, I had no idea at all what spatchcocking was. And uh, thank God the producer, uh, Stephanie, told me. I, mean, I thought it was a mistake, too. I thought it had something to do with the spatula. Uh, it, but it, it, it's, it's an allusion towards something you wouldn't want to have done with you if you were a human being. Listen, there's no issue out there. Uh, that Hollywood and the intelligentsia and, and academia has misread America more on uh, than immigration. And I can prove it to you guys. I mean, uh, look at what happened in this election. The Democrats did well, right, in the midterms. They had a good day. It wasn't a great day historically, but it's a decent day. They went back to House, lost in the Senate, and did okay in the governorships. But look at what happened. The progressives out there uh, who ran on open borders type platforms and this immigration policy, it's anti-Donald Trump, they lost. They got crushed badly. Matter of fact, the Republican in Florida, Ron DeSantis, who ran a commercial with his kid building the wall, literally got 44% of the Hispanic vote. They are misreading America terribly on this issue because chaos is not a brand and chaos at the border does not sell. And Dan, anyone. what are they missing about ICE? Because ICE does a, does a lot of great work, but they do a lot of things like uh, sex trafficking, drug trafficking, things that you want to abolish ICE and you want to call them, dehumanize them, you're dehumanizing the great work that they do as well. Well, what's really grossly offensive about this is having been a former law enforcement officer at the city level with the NYPD and the federal level with the Secret Service, these are men and women who get up every morning. Pete, listen, you know, like you when you were on the military side, nobody's getting rich there, okay? Nobody does it for the money. They don't do it for the fame or the glory. They do it because of a commitment to service. These are very intelligent people who could go into the private sector and do quite well for themselves. And what do they do? They defend our borders. They defend 
defend our borders against child trafficking, drug trafficking, narco terrorism, terrorism. And you have this Hollywood crowd who, who, who wants to use them as some kind of a foil for some sick political message. And, and you want to make it even worse? A lot, a lot of ICE agents out there, a large swath of them, are Hispanic men and women uh, so who want exactly to defend right. this country as well. Yeah, it, it's really it, offensive. It, it is very offensive, but you have to give the left credit for at least playing on the culture side. I mean, they you, listen. Uh, conservatives spend a lot of money on think tanks, and uh, and the left actually does a good job of going into the culture. I, I, this sitcom's not very funny, but it will um, it will impact some people. Um, but I, I think you're right, Dan. They're on the wrong side of the issue. The American people don't ag agree with a lot of it, but this is a good way to start to um, sway some minds and. Um, yeah. Conservatives are just not in that space and at all. Friends and supporters of an undocumented immigrant arrested by ICE agents are holding a prayer vigil for him tonight. Samuel Oliver Bruno has been living in sanctuary at the Citywell United Methodist Church in Durham for more than a year. Friday morning, he went to Morrisville for a fingerprinting appointment as he tried to find a path to stay in the United States. That is where ICE agents detained him. Protesters outside tried to block the van carrying Oliver Bruno. Police say they arrested 27 people who did not follow orders to disperse. He fears for his life, and his family has had recent threats um, there in Veracruz. Um, and so he fears for his life if deported. He will be killed if he's deported. A spokesman for ICE says Oliver Bruno was convicted in 2014 of coming into the country illegally from Mexico using fraudulent ID documents, and they say he has no further appeals. Sky News is reporting the migrants in the caravan are preparing to march to the U.S. border within hours. And they plan to beg and plead for asylum and mercy. So what is the White House plan on all this? Brian Yenis is live in West Palm Beach near the president's Mar-a-Lago residence. Hi, Brian. Hi, David. Well, look, rumors about the caravan rushing the border have been rampant for weeks now. And earlier this week, for instance, the San Ysidro boarding crossing, one of the busiest along the border, closed some northern bound lanes because of these rumors that some of these immigrants in this caravan were going to rush the border. Nonetheless, Sky News is reporting that there is talk that some of these 6,000 members of the caravan are thinking about heading towards the border this weekend. Why this weekend? Well, a federal judge issued a temporary restraining order on the executive order that initially that the Trump administration put in saying that all of these immigrants that wanted to apply for asylum must go to a, a legal border crossing. Uh, well, a judge nixed that temporarily at least. And so now the thought is that perhaps some of these immigrants are going to make their way to the border. Troops have been deployed to the border. Some 5,900 of them have been putting concertina wire, that razor wire, and erecting barriers along the border. They are there to support the border patrol if they ever get overwhelmed. In fact, the chief of staff of the White House, John Kelly, authorized lethal force for these troops to use it if they need it in the memo saying quote a show or use of force including lethal force where necessary crowd control temporary detention and cursory search the memo went on to say the deployed military personnel shall not without further direction from you conduct traditional civilian law enforcement activities such as arrest search and seizure in connection with the enforcement of the laws so general jim mattis explained that these Groups. They do have, uh, they are not armed. They are here at the border. They're putting down the wire and they are not actually even supposed to make any arrests. If they do detain an immigrant, they are to hand over that immigrant over to local police so that they do not violate federal law. Earlier this week on Thanksgiving Day, President Trump said that he is actually willing to shut down the entire border if this caravan situation doesn't get handled quickly. It gets to a level where we are going to lose control or where people are going to start getting hurt. We will close entry into the country for a period of time until we can get it under control. The whole border, I mean the whole border. And Mexico will not be able to sell their cars into the United States where they make so many cars at great benefit to them. 
The mayor of Tijuana, where the majority of the caravan is right now, more than 5,000 people, many of them women and children, saying that they're fleeing uh, poverty and violence, are in Tijuana. And the mayor there has declared a humanitarian crisis, saying they just can't simply, they don't know what to do with all of these folks. And frankly, David, they could be there for months, given the lines that are at these border crossings and the asylum process. It could be months, and these people don't have anywhere to go. They can't go back to Honduras, and they're not allowed to come into the United States. So that is why the Tijuana mayor is concerned. And finally, David, all of this has prompted the president to say he's willing to perhaps shut down the government if they don't give him that $5 billion that he's been asking for for that border wall. We've heard him uh, make this threat multiple times this year. We'll see if it, if it comes through. Brian David. Yenis in Florida with the president. Brian, thank you very much. Today, President Trump is addressing the crisis on our southern border and calling for funding of the border wall, tweeting, quote, Republicans and Democrats must come together finally with a major border security package, which will include funding for the wall. After 40 years of talk, it's finally time for action. Fix the border for once and for all now. Now, the president's call for action comes as over 6,000 members of the migrant caravan have reached the Mexican border town of Tijuana. And at one point, a small group of protesters broke away from the caravan and got within 500 feet of the U.S. border. And in an interview released yesterday, get this, Hillary Clinton told The Guardian that Europe needs to get a handle on immigration to stop the growth of right-wing populists. Hillary says, quote, I think it's fair to say Europe has done its part and must send a very clear message. We are not going to be able to continue to provide refuge and support because if we don't deal with a migration issue, it will continue to roil the body politic. Joining us now with reaction is America First Action Senior Advisor and former Trump Press Secretary Sean Spicer, Fox News contributor to Roy Murdoch, and National Border Patrol Council Vice President Ardell Cueto. All right, good evening, gentlemen. Thank you all for being here. Uh, you know, I have to start with Hillary only because I always like to start with Hillary. Uh, I mean, did this woman, uh, did she have a lobotomy? Why is she now saying, we've got to tell Europe they have to stop the migration? It's a royal to the body politic. Sean Spicer, hit it. <laughs> I'm not sure if anyone's listening to her. That's the bigger issue. Uh, I, I don't know what, I mean, it's funny. She First, she stands in the way of immigration reform. She does everything she can to stop it, stop uh, dealing with it in this country. And yet she wants to preach to Europe what they should be doing. And then somehow comes up to this kooky response that somehow because they've allowed all these people into their borders, had open border policies, that that's given rise to the populist movement that created Brexit and Trump. Uh, I, I don't really even fully appreciate what she's trying to get through. It sounds like a bunch of gobbledygook, to be honest with you. Well, you know, DeRoy, I personally uh, was shocked momentarily, but then when I thought it through, I said to myself, self, the truth is that she will change her opinion, she and Bill are notorious for this, based upon the way the wind blows. So um, it, it tells me one of two things, that, you know, she's a chameleon, no, uh, absolutely. Yes, but secondly, that she's willing to throw the refugees to the wolves uh, because she thinks it's helping the politics of her opponent. What does that tell you about her? Well, I mean, it's very simple. You take whatever argument she's making about Europe and you apply here. I mean, if we're going to have uh, this situation of chaos of people breaking in uh, from the uh, Guatemalan, uh, Guatemalan, Guatemalan Mexican border and then breaking into our border as well, it's only going to fuel people who uh, believe in what President Trump says, which, which is we have to have border security. And I just say, look, you know, if, if that uh, argument applies in Europe, to Europe, it definitely applies over here as well. All right. We'll and see if she's consistent about it. Oh, she is. That she is. And Arto Cueto, you are the man at the border. Uh, tell us what is going on there and tell us what is wrong with the President of the United States saying that if you want to seek asylum, come in the right way. Come through a legal, you know, entrance. There's nothing wrong with what he's saying. Judge, the reality is we now have a president that he's doing what no other president has done, and that's pretty much making sure that our nations are secure. Short of grabbing a gun and a rifle and being at a point himself, he's done everything he can. It's now up to the Democrats and the Republicans to come together 
and do the right thing and help out with the bills that he's trying to present. And, and I'll be honest, it's also, it falls on the, the leadership within the DHS and Homeland Security. This is a man that's on point and he's showing he cares. Okay. It doesn't matter what side of the aisle you're on, you want security in your borders. Oh. You want security in your home. Everyone locks their doors at night. Okay, but let me ask you this. You said something. It, 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 it comes down to, uh, uh, you know, the, the leaders of Homeland Security, and, and that would be uh, uh, Kirsten Nielsen. What is she not doing right, or what is she doing wrong? You know, it, it, what I'm saying is they need to get on the right path. When you have a president saying, I need you to stop catch and release, and catch and release has not stopped, I think that's a problem. Okay. All right. And Sean Spicer, I mean, you were there when all this was, uh, uh, when you were in the White House with the catch and release that was started with the Obama administration. What can the president do about that, especially in light of this federal judge? You know, every time he does something, and we're going to talk about this in the next segment, you know, you got a federal judge willing to stop it. But what about catch and release? How do we change that? Well, I, I think this president has actually changed the entire dynamic uh, because he's made it very clear. He's talked about that they're, they're going to be uh, stay in Mexico, apply for asylum there unless they can prove that they're in imminent danger. He has upended all of the all of the uh, precedent that has gone on before this and, and talk, taken away just the talk and the rhetoric that we've gotten from so many politicians and replaced it with action. Uh, this president, I think, has done as much as he possibly can through executive order and action. Uh, and through his administration, through DHS, he truly does need a partner in Congress in these remaining days of this lame well, duck Congress to give him the funding that he needs for a border wall but, and border but, but security and additional Sean, border agents. you and I both know they don't want to give him the money for the wall. I mean, and I blame Paul Ryan and Mitch McConnell for this. They limited the actual building to $1.6 uh, 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 billion. Or is it $1.6 million? I think it's billion. Billionaire. All right. Billionaire. And in the end, I'll go to you, DeRoy. I mean, the truth is that, uh, it, you know, the party's not working with him, and now he says, I want Republicans and Democrats to come together. What leverage does the president have? He's talking about shutting down the government. Uh, I mean, what does he do? A couple of things. One is he could shut down the government. Second thing, I think once these guys come back from Thanksgiving, he should keep the 115th Congress in up on Capitol Hill until January 3rd when Democrats come in, and they should vote, 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 and litter his desk with legislation on immigration and other things. And the other message that has to go out to all these people rush, we want to rush across the border, is if you want to come to America, do what my mother and father did when they left Costa Rica. They went to the U.S. Embassy, and they filled out visa applications. Fill out the paperwork. That's not too much to ask. You want to come to America, ring the front door. Bell, don't run in and break in through the bathroom window, which is the approach these people are taking now. And you know, when uh, Art, Art, when when Dorori talks about, you know, ring the doorbell, you know, come in. I mean, uh, right. th our country is our home. That's right. And you know, you, I was, uh, you referred to this. Uh, some people take objection when you call it an invasion. I don't know what what the heck else to call it. But you call them a it's horde. An invasion. It's you an invasion. You call them a horde. That was a word that I hadn't heard. Why? Because it's, it's, it's a huge group of people from another country that are flying a flag to enter our country. That doesn't look like people that are seeking asylum. It doesn't look like people that are, you know, uh, escaping persecution. They're coming here as an invasion, plain and simple. A lot of it has to do with the economy. You know, hey, if you guys want to give credit to President Trump, then give him, president, give him uh, credit because of the economy. That's one of the reasons they're coming up here. The reality is we have a president that's doing everything he can and everyone else needs to get on board. That's the bottom line. Hey, Jimmy, we all want to feel secure I, I in tell, our homes. Go ahead, Sean. I, I, I will say that you mentioned at the beginning, America, America First Action and America First PAC have been in this fight with the president, airing ads, putting out videos, making sure that the research is done. But we're going to make sure that we do our part to spread the word about what the president's policies are doing and to put pressure on Congress as we head into these final days of this Congress. Well, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, one of the things that I think is so important right now is that Tijuana has actually declared a humanitarian crisis. <clears throat> right. And, uh, in, you know, apparently, as this caravan's been moving, gentlemen, they've stayed one or two nights in a particular town. And so the town is happy to give them food and give them, you know, a place to stay. But uh, I think we're looking at the crisis of, uh, you know, Guatemala and Tijuana. But Tijuana in particular, in addition to some of the violence that we're seeing, you know, they, they're saying, look, we need the United Nations to come in. Uh, this caravan is out of control. Go ahead, DeRoy. Well, yeah, I think also my question here is where is it written that
that anybody has a right to come into this country. And they don't if you, have it. If you leave Honduras and you get to Mexico, you're entering a country that's about four times wealthier than Honduras is. And I'd say, hey, that's pretty comfortable. And the Mexican government said, we'll give you homes, we'll give you uh, education, we'll give you health care. Right. They ought to say, hey, this is right. great, we'll take that deal. And their attitude is basically like the Steely Dan song. Whoa, no, Guadalajara won't do. And then here they come to Tijuana, ready to rush the border in the United States. Again, where do we have the obligation to let them in, especially when they don't ask permission to come in here? Well, there's no question. And, and, and are, why are they not, I'm going to go right to you, but why are they not taking advantage right. of what Mexico's offering them? Be because they don't want to. They don't want to because it's not a, it's not that they're looking for asylum. They're looking to come into the United States because they probably have jobs already lined up here. They probably have people already here that are waiting for them. That's the reality. They want to invade our country. They want to come in here because there's no consequences for them. That's what it is. And it's not a race issue. People need to get away from this. You're seeing the, the mayor of Tijuana and everything he's saying. <clears throat> no one's calling him a racist. That's yet, right. right. President Trump has said all the right things. And you turn around and you call it a racist statement here. It has nothing to do with race. Illegal is not a race. Illegal is simply illegal. Uh, There's a right way to do things and a wrong way to do things. So well said. And you know, uh, Sean, I'm going to go to you. You know, one of the things that I saw today was a video where one of these caravan members is yelling, open the gates, Trump. We are looking to come in. We are looking for work. I mean, can you imagine while they fly the flag of their own country, they say, Trump, open the gates. I mean, and, and God forbid you try to deport them to that country they were waving the flag on. That's why they want to get on our soil so they can immediately uh, have constitutional invasion. rights. Exactly. Sean. Well, well look, I think, I think they recognize the fact that this president's created an amazing economy here in the United States. There's a ton of jobs available, and they see that. They want to come up here for the jobs. Uh, but at the same time, the president's continued to be tough on immigration. He understands that we have to have border security. So that there's this catch-22. He's creating an amazing economy where there's tons of jobs to go around, and people are using that as a magnet to want to come into this country. But the president's been very clear that we're still a country of immigrants. We're a welcoming country, but you have to do it legally. And I think that's where the, the where people have to understand that the president wants to have law and order. He wants to have a vibrant country that continues to welcome people, but do so in an orderly way. Well, the way they're supposed to. Anyway, a great discussion, uh, uh, DeRoy, Sean, and Art. Uh, sorry, next time we'll come back to you. Help is on the way. Dozens of humanitarian groups will head to Tijuana this weekend, bringing supplies to the migrants waiting at the border. And now Tijuana's mayor is calling the backup at the border a humanitarian crisis. 10 News reporter Anthony Pura is live in San Ysidro. And Anthony, organizers call it, are calling this a caravan of love. That is what they are calling it. And this caravan of supplies will be leaving tomorrow morning from San Diego to Tijuana. And it is coming at a time when there seems to be a desperate need for it. So people are sending us things. You know, we have you know, babies and... Enrique Morones showed us some of the supplies headed to the border for the thousands of migrants that fled Central America and arrived in Tijuana. But overall, we say bienvenidos migrantes, welcome migrants. Morones is part of Border Angels. The group is teaming up with dozens of other organizations across Southern California to bring humanitarian aid to the caravan. And we've been there before. But this is the first time we do the Caravan of Love. The Caravan of Love will consist of 15 to 20 vehicles full of supplies like non-perishable food, blankets, toiletries, and so much more. Just imagine if all of a sudden your house is on fire and you have to run out and live in the street, just like that. What would you need? It's those same types of things. Because these people are escaping a very difficult situation in their home country. So they had to flee. They had to flee. They didn't have time to take a lot of things with them. The act of goodwill comes at a time when the mayor of Tijuana called the migrant situation a humanitarian crisis, saying the Mexican government is not providing enough aid. President Trump also says he'll close down the border if safety issues emerge. And on Thanksgiving Day, groups associated with the caravan held demonstrations in Tijuana and U.S. border officials geared up along the border in a training exercise. Morones hopes the help they provide will soften the tone and highlight what the migrants need. You know, we want to treat these people with kindness and with love. And it is not just supplies. Doctors will also be coming down with the group. They will be offering health exams to these migrants and families that have spent all this time traveling. We're reporting live from the U.S.-Mexico border. Anthony Pura, 10 News. For more on the border battle, we bring in Wisconsin Congressman Sean Duffy. Congressman, thanks so much for coming on this holiday weekend. 
It's good to be with you. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, so I'd like to start with uh, these nearly 6,000 active duty troops that have been deployed to the border. I know you're a big supporter of the president's immigration policies, but do you believe that deploying these 6,000 active duty troops, do you think that's really the best use of them? Well, first, I think we have to take a step back, and you, you see Mexico, which is a, a, allows a free pass for Central American caravans to pass through Mexico and hopefully get into the United States of America. Well, because the president has now secured that part of the border where Tijuana and the and the uh, and the caravan is now located, Mexico is having to deal with, you know, these 5,000 um, migrants. And I think what you're seeing with the way the pre the president's dealing with Mexico and the caravan is, um, one, the president says you're not going to come in, uh, but by way of an orderly process. Number one and number two, if you can't control the caravan, we're going to shut down our border. So now Mexico can't deal with the United States in a carefree fashion. They have to actually deal with the immigration problem that we're facing at our border. And so I think the president has been smart in saying we are going to stop this caravan, which means we're not going to incentivize future caravans to come from Central America and think they get free pass through Mexico and into the United States. This is how but, you stop these crises at our borders. Right. But, Congressman, I mean, closing down the entire border, uh, is that even really realistic? And if so, how would you do it? Reagan did it in the past, and listen, it's it's an extreme measure, but uh, I think the president's right. When when you don't have borders, you don't have a country, and if Mexico doesn't cooperate, not only are we just going to deal with the the, the migrants uh, in the caravan who are at our border, we're going to deal with trade as well, and that would be far more consequential for Mexico than it is for the United States. And so if we're going to deal with the crisis in Central America, it has to be both the United States and Mexico partnering together but if Mexico thinks, uh, again, they can just let people pass through their country and get access to the United States, they're going to have a rude awakening because Donald Trump isn't going to take it anymore. And frankly, the Congress, um, at least in, in the next month and several days that Republicans have control, we're going to continue to try to push border security funding so we don't have to have the troops at the border. We can actually have a secure right. border by way of a wall. But Congressman, as of now, we've got 5,600 yeah. active duty U.S. troops, about, I believe, 1,200 uh, National Guards troops. Um, they're there this holiday weekend. Back to my first question. I mean, do you personally believe that this is the best use of our active duty military so, on the Kristen, southern border? It, the, the question would come back to you to say, listen, um, when prior caravans have come, um, they're breaking into the United States. They're storming our border and they're getting in. President Trump has now sent uh, troops as backup. Um, uh, so now we see they're not actually getting into the United States. They're sitting in, in Tijuana, and now the mayor of Tijuana is like, I have, I have a humanitarian crisis on my hands, which is a Mexican problem. So the point with what the president has done with the troops is it's actually working. Um, people can't get across our border unless we say you can come in. So the president's action um, is successful, and so I support that. So President Trump yesterday, he tweeted that Republicans and Democrats must come together on major border security package. He still wants funding for that wall. What, do you think that's going to happen? I mean, is that, is that really a possibility uh, when this new Congress comes in? Yeah, so, so uh, we have a partial government funding into next year, but th this portion of uh, government funding is only funded through uh, December 7th. So uh, we have a bill in the House that would uh, give us $5 billion, which, which the president has requested, to build a wall. Uh, the Senate has less than two billion, so we're going to have to try to come together and see if we can get that five billion dollars for the president. The problem that we have isn't in the House. The Senate, you need 60 votes, which means you need nine, nine Democrats and every single Republican to vote for this border wall. Uh, that's where the showdown is going to take place. And listen, the, 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 the president is, I think, sick of, of, of dealing with an insecure border. He ran on it. He wants to secure it. And I think the threat is real that uh, he may not sign a bill uh, that doesn't give, us, give him the $5 billion to, again, yeah. build a wall and secure the border. So uh, I can't tell you what's going to happen. But the problem, Kristen, is not in the House. It's in the Senate, just to be very Congressman, clear Congressman, i, I got to leave it there. I know most Americans are hoping that you all in this next Congress are able to push through some, some true, meaningful immigration reform. Best of luck to you and thanks for coming on. Thank you. Have a good, good day. Maria Irina Perez fled the bloody streets and hunger of Honduras with her three-year-old. For a moment, she found comfort in a street mass organized by Tijuana residents. They're one block from a large municipal sports facility housing nearly 5,000 members of the exodus and face weeks of waiting to ask for asylum in the U.S. 
The caravan members prayed for strength. Many wept in fear and hope. Perez prayed for God to feed the babies in the caravan. She told us there isn't enough food at the shelters. This morning my boy was hungry and someone gave me shoes to sell to give my baby food. She says she had a dream last night in which President Trump opened the door to the U.S. and let all the children through. If he doesn't want the men to enter, he should let the women enter. We come to work not to create disorder. I am a daughter of God. Tijuana resident Jorge Guillermo Santos brought more than just scripture. He also brought food and coffee. If Jesus was here, alive, like us, he'd do this. He'd give food to the hungry, drink to the thirsty, clothes to those without clothes. He condemned fellow Mexicans who physically and verbally attacked the caravan. There's people who don't know the love of God. They don't know the power of God. So they act like that because they don't know God. Nearby, a Honduran man named Marco Antonio Rivera painted a flag he plans to carry this weekend during a march to the border. He used strong language to condemn President Trump, saying he was born in a cradle of gold. He should give us a work permit. We don't need a house or money or food. We'll do it ourselves. As he painted, worried mothers asked him to watch his language, fearing he'd make the whole exodus look bad. Dozens streamed from the shelter to a job fair to see if they could find temporary work while waiting to get into the U.S. Jean Guerrero, KPBS News. President Trump, he's on the brink of forcing migrants to undergo a major new screening. The Democrats are not going to be happy about this. RWN reports that President Donald Trump's administration is now considering giving the U.S. troops on the border with Mexico the authority to carry out medical screening of migrants. That's according to what U.S. officials reported to Reuters this week. The proposal, which is still in a draft form and is circulating within the administration, would involve the military in screenings for things like illness and injury only if U.S. Customs and Border Protection Agency personnel were overwhelmed and unable to do so on their own. Take a look. According to Reuters, the Trump administration is considering giving U.S. troops stationed at the border with Mexico the authority to carry out medical screening of migrants. The proposal is still in draft form and is circulating within the administration. It would involve the military screening for things like illness and injury only if U.S. border agents were overwhelmed and unable to do it on their own. Previously, the Pentagon said it didn't expect its forces to directly interact with migrants. Now, the proposal would expand the mission for the Pentagon, which previously said it did not expect the forces to directly interact with the migrants. U.S. military duties on the border, including stringing up concertina wire, and building temporary housing have been aimed at supporting the border customs and border protection personnel. The U.S. officials who spoke to Reuters about the proposal did so on a condition of anonymity because Trump has not yet signed off on the idea. Now, it was unclear if the proposal, if confirmed, is coming in the next few days, but it might prolong the deployment of at least some border troops. Uh, the commander of the mission did tell Reuters last week that the number of troops may have peaked around 5,800, and he would soon look at whether to begin sending forces home or shifting some to new border positions. Let's just hope and pray that they continue to fortify that border because that migrant caravan is not going away anytime soon. 10,000 migrant invaders are going to be camping out in Tijuana, ready to storm the border when the opportunity presents itself. We need to make sure that our boys are there, our boys and girls are safe on that border. Comment below. We'll see you with the next report. For the Next News Network, I'm Gary Franchi. With nearly 6,000 U.S. troops deployed to the southern border, President Trump now calling on bipartisan support to fund his border wall. Talk radio host Michael Coolidge joining us now to discuss the future of the wall and the deployment on the border. Michael, good to see you uh, as always. Uh, yes, these images well. that we've got of U.S. troops stringing barbed wire and then they're going to start helping uh, the Border Patrol, as we have heard, 
those play pretty well with the president's base. How do they play with the center? Well, I think that when you see troops guarding the border and on an issue that the president really won the election on in 2016, it shows that he is trying to do everything he can to secure the border. It's not probably going to get help with Congress as far as funding it goes. But these troops, you know, a lot of people have complained. Uh, they don't want troops away from their families for the holidays, and no one does. Uh, however, when you sign up to join the military, you raise your right hand. Sometimes you go places you don't want to go, and sometimes you have to do things you don't want to do. And a lot of times, uh, some of those memories you make on holidays deployed somewhere are really, really something else. Interesting perspective there. Um, I guess the, the other question would be is, is that uh, does this in some way strengthen the president's hand and Republicans' hand uh, as we head towards this December 7th deadline of funding the government and Republicans trying to get the president uh, some money for his wall? I, I think so. Uh, what would really strengthen his hand, and he shouldn't do this because it would strengthen his hand, he should do it because it's the right thing to do, is to visit the troops on the border. He should, it, it, anytime the commander in chief, especially the commander in chief who made the decision to send troops somewhere, actually visits them, it goes a long way for morale. Uh, I know I was uh, deployed in 2002, 2003, and I had gotten back to the States from Operation Iraqi Freedom uh, before President Bush went over there and surprised the troops on Thanksgiving. And I have a lot of friends who were there who said it went a long way no, no, towards you morale. Know, well, I think that's what he should do. Interesting that you bring this up at a time when uh, President Trump's gotten a lot of uh, heat for not visiting uh, U.S. troops in uh, war zones. Yes, and fair again, criticism? because he made this decision, uh, it, it's a fair criticism, but he would maybe argue that he wasn't the commander in chief that sent troops to Iraq and Afghanistan, for example. He is the one responsible for sending the troops to this border uh, with Mexico. So him showing up there, I think, would be a great thing for everyone. Hmm. Interesting. Haven't heard uh, any plans for him to visit. Certainly the optics of which, as you point out, uh, might change the narratives. Go down there. So your idea would be go down there, hang out with the troops as we watch some of the uh, pictures of the troops there frying turkeys uh, on the border uh, during their deployment. Uh, go down there and argue for the wall in front of the border that he has troops on. Absolutely. I know December 15th is a date that they're supposed to be done. If they're not done there, if he decides to extend them, he should spend Christmas with them. And I honestly think, again, it would go a long way towards, towards their morale, and it might push uh, and force the Democrats' hand. Who knows? Well, Laredo, Texas is a little different uh, scene than Mar-a-Lago. We can all agree on that. Uh, interesting point uh, on that. This deadline for Republicans, though, in order to get funding for the government, unless the government shut down around Christmas, uh, comes a lot quicker than that. Politically expedient yes. for the president to shut down the government over this, or are Democrats and the media going to force his hand with the pictures on the other side of the wall, meaning all of these people in Tijuana and other places uh, living in camps waiting to come to America for a better life? Yeah, uh, I, no, I'm not a big fan of lame duck uh, legislating, but if he doesn't do something if the border isn't funded before December 7th. Uh, we're going to have to wait and probably till the next decade until uh, there's another opportunity for this. So uh, shutting down the government might be the only way for President Trump to uh, fund the border. All right, Mr. Coolidge, border we security. appreciate your insights. Joining us, I believe, there from Chicago, uh, the Windy City, where it's a little cold behind you on the bridge, but uh, it's nice to see you as always. plan would require migrants to remain in Mexico as their claims move through U.S. courts. But this latest development could face a legal hurdle. Human rights activists and others argue the move could put migrants at risk and undermines their lawful right to apply for asylum. It comes just days after President Trump threatened to shut down the entire Entire southern border. The president adding he has authorized troops to use legal force, lethal force, if necessary, to stop migrants from illegally entering the country. We're going to have a strong border. Our southern border is going to be very strong. We're not, you heard me speaking to some of the folks just now in different parts of the world, and they're so proud of the job they're doing. And you got to have borders. If you don't have borders, you don't have a country. 
I mean, the Democrats want open borders, and they want these people coming in. Many of those people are criminals. Brian Yenis following all of this from West Palm Beach, Florida, near the president's Mar-a-Lago estate, where he is spending the holiday weekend. Hi, Brian. Hi, Arthel. Well, the Washington Post says that this new plan is called Remain in Mexico. Now, look, nothing has been finalized. Nothing has been signed. But according to the Washington Post, under this new plan, immigrants traveling through Mexico to the United States seeking asylum will have to remain in Mexico until their applications are processed. On average, Arthel, the app, an asylum application takes about two to five years to be processed. And you had human rights activists who are saying that's two to five years with potential refugees staying in cartel-owned territory along the border. Now, both Mexican and U.S. officials hope this will deter people and future caravans. This reported agreement between Mexico's president-elect Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador and Trump provides a solution to the so-called catch-and-release policy that the president has continuously railed against. And according to this policy, those who come into the United States seeking asylum are let go into the United States until their applications are processed. Now, some never show up for their court dates in the White House. Well, we've reached out for comment, and they have, are neither confirming nor denying that this plan is set. But this is what the White House said to, us, it said to Fox News in a statement, quote, President Trump has developed a strong relationship with the incoming Obrador administration, and we look forward to working with them on a wide range of issues. Now, President Obrador takes office December 1st, and this is all happening as more than 5,000 migrants in the caravan have camped out in Tijuana, Mexico. The mayor there has declared a humanitarian crisis. Many are trying to claim asylum in the U.S., where the asylum backlog is already massive. Look at these numbers. The number of asylum applications has more than tripled over the last five years from 141,000, well, I'm sorry, from 43,000 to 141,000 in 2017. There's a backlog of some 318,000 asylum applications. And as a result, the Trump administration has adopted a last one in, first one out policy. They're trying to go through all of these asylum applications that have recently come in quickly so that they can deter people from trying to come here for asylum cases. All of this as the president is threatening to shut down the government if Congress doesn't come up with some some five billion dollars that he wants to build a wall. Could there be a shutdown? There certainly could, and it will be about border security, of which the wall is a part. Some 5,900 U.S. troops have been deployed to the border to back up the Border Patrol. They are unarmed and have mostly laid down concertina wire. Even tro um, the troops are allowed to detain migrants, but only for a few minutes. The minute that they get an, a migrant, if that were to happen, they're, they're, by law, they're supposed to give those migrants over to Border Patrol and local police. Uh, according to the Washington Post, also, Arthel, the troops at the border played a part in the calculus here with this plan. It was, it was part of uh, what Mexican officials considered when they were coming up with this plan with the Trump administration. Arthel. Brian Yannis, thank you very much. Remember that video that was going around of the immigrant shooting at the police officers in Arkansas? Well, we're finding out now that he's a DACA recipient. Thanks, Obama. Jim Hoff for the Gateway Pundit reports that dash cam video captured the moment a man opened fire on police officers during a traffic stop in Arkansas. Luis Cobos Sen Senobio, 29 years old, an immigrant, was pulled over by Tonatown, in Tonatown by uh, Corporal, what is this? I don't know, CPL? What is that? Corporal? Yeah, that would be Corporal, right? Corporal Brett Thompson with the Washington County Sheriff's Office for a traffic violation. Now, the immigrant opened his door and unleashed a barrage of gunfire at Thompson. Thompson fired back but missed. The immigrant then got back in his car and drove off. Take a look. It is heart-stopping police dash cam video of a police officer getting into a gunfight with a suspect he pulled over. It's a scene that kind of looks like a shootout from the old Wild West. It started as a routine stop for a traffic violation. Then the driver's door swings open out of nowhere. Just fire! Just fire! Jesus! Look at the white SUV heading straight into the hail of bullets. The driver hightails it out of there in reverse. The gun battle rages. 
The shooter must think he's in the Wild West. Watch as he bolts out of the car and unleashes a barrage of bullets. Another motorist captures the cop returning fire. Then the suspect jumps back in his car and peels out of there. I need you to now. What happens next came as a shock. The gunman screeches to a stop, emerging from the car, his girlfriend. Triple, I got a white female, just get out. The woman gives herself up. Keep your hands up. Who's that with you? That was my boyfriend, but I didn't know who you talked about. Why'd he pull a gun on me? Get on your knees. Corporal Brett Thompson isn't taking any chances. All right, all right I'm going to put you in handcuffs because I don't know what I'm dealing with. Are you okay? I'm, I'm so really scared. Corporal Thompson handcuffs the woman and places her in the cruiser. Another officer checks the brave Arkansas cop for bullet wounds. Unbelievable. And that poor girl getting out of the car like that. Totally terrified, and she was truthfully terrified. Okay, that was no, that, that was not an act. That girl was terrified. Now, according to the Democrats, the video must be doctored, though, right? Yeah, we all know he was just a good boy, hardworking, would never harm anyone, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But now we're finding out he is actually a DACA-protected illegal immigrant. Hmm. So this is more reason why we need to improve our vetting system and fund the wall so that we know exactly what kind of people are coming into this country. So incidents like that, incidents like this, do not happen ever again. Thankfully, nobody was harmed in the situation. Comment below. We'll see you at the next report. For the Next News Network, I'm Gary Franchi. 14,000 immigrant children are now living in the U.S. detention camps and shelters, and that's a record high according to the U.S. Health and Human Services. The number is up from the 2016 monthly average of four to 9,000 children. U.S. Health and Human Services says the number is high because of the Trump administration policies to, quote, reduce risk and increase safety. Those policies include exhaustive screenings of adult sponsors wanting to take care of the detained children. Single vehicle bust at the Far International Bridge this week intercepted nearly $1 million worth of drugs. According to Customs and Border Protection, a 30-year-old man from Tamaulipas had the drugs hidden in a shipment of produce. When he was sent for further inspection, officers found 10 packages of meth and 5 packages of cocaine.